Let's talk about reduce, which is one of the most interesting functions, not only in JavaScript, but in programming in general. Defining this function is kind of tricky, I would say. I will give you a definition and then we will just implement it. So this way, I hope you will be able to build your intuition quicker than through some abstract description. Reducing or folding is this process where you are taking a collection, you are taking an array and you are trying to recombine it in a way that you are producing a single value. When I say a single value, it doesn't mean it's a primitive value. So it doesn't mean it's um, if you have an array as an input, you will have to have a number or a string as, as an output. You can have an array as output as well. But the process is that you have this structure and you are trying to recombine it somehow. So the other name, we, we say this is reducing, but we can also say this is folding. And folding is like, you know, a sheet of paper, you can fold it. So you have a long piece of shape, uh, long piece of paper, and then you can somehow change it, the shape of this paper, of this object, and make it different. You can recombine the parts of that so that it's something uh, singular. I imagine this definition may be more confusing than helping. So let's try to implement our own reduce. The implementation is very simple and then we will try to build our intuition slowly step by step. So just a small note, reducing or folding is this recombination process. And let's create this function by hand. So this function takes three parameters as input. The first one is the function, which is used to recombine the collection. And the second parameter is the initial value. So we need an initial value to start the process of recombining those elements in, in our collection, which is the third parameter. So now the first thing is that we need to start somewhere. So we will create a variable called stored. So we will store something there. So it's a variable for storing value. And we will say that at the beginning, it's the initial value we we got from the invoking that, that function. And now very similar to what we were doing with filtering and with mapping, we need to go over the collection. We need to iterate over this collection we, we get as a parameter. So let's create a tracking element, current element. So we are, we are taking each element of the collection. It's very similar to mapping and filtering. And now what's different? So here we need to invoke the function and we need to invoke it on the stored value and the element. And that's not all we need to assign the result of this function to the stored again. So it means that we are somehow taking the current element. We are taking what we remembered. So the stored is something which this function remembers. We are taking those two values and we are doing something. And this operation is general. It's, it's not defined here. It's passed as a parameter. So we don't know exactly which kind of recombination is applied. But we know that this function needs to know about the memory, about the past would happen in the past and about the current element. So it, it needs to, this function takes into account what happened before and the current element of this collection. And, it, and then it does this recombination and the result is then stored for the future invocation. So it's stored again in the same variable store. So the stored variable is usually, is also known as an accumulator because we accumulate something there. And finally, when we are done with the, with folding our, a collection, we return the this memory, this stored value, and that's all. So it's even simpler, I would say, that filtering and on the same level than mapping. The only thing is that the tricky part happens here. And when looking at this function, it seems simple, but this function is extremely interesting and it's it's very general. It allows you to do many different things and we will see some of those things here in this episode and then we will dive even deeper into what this function provides. So this is one way of defining a reduced function and let's see it in practice. The most simple folding would be to, let's imagine again we have an array of values and we want to fold it 
in a way that when we go over this array, we just want to add values to the previous one. So that we start with one. So this is our initial value. Or even we could say we start with zero. At the beginning, we remember initial value and we store it in our accumulator or in this, in this case, this is the stored uh, variable. And we take the first element from the array and we add it. So zero plus one is one. And we store it again. So we now have one and we go next to the next element. So we remember one, but we get two. So we add those two and we have three. And we store three, we remember three. And we go to the next element, which is three. We add it. So three plus three is six. We remember six and we go to the next one, which is four. So six plus four is 10. So the result of folding this four element array is 10, which is the sum of those elements. So that's the most simple way of thinking about this. And let's try to do it in code. So let's define this again. So let's do it like that. Let's use reduce. So our function, let's call it add. The initial value would be zero. zero and the collection will be the numbers we defined. So this is the result. Let's print it. So we haven't defined add function yet, so let's do it. So this function needs to take two elements, the stored, the, this memory, and the current element. And what will it will do? It will just add those two, because we, we are interested in, interested in adding, combining those elements by adding them. And let's see if it works. Let's uh, run this. So it's 100, as we expect. So it works. And of course, we've done it by hand, but this function is also built in in JavaScript and provided for you. So you don't have to implement it on your own. So, and it's also defined as a method on the array object. So if you have numbers, which is an object, and which is an array, you can just invoke it as we did with the previous functions. And just you just need to provide the the function and optional you can provide the, the initial value so let's uh, assign it to r2 and let's print it so it's 100 as before so let me quickly uh, split this into two so we'll add another section here adding numbers let me get this whole code over here so usually when you are reading about the reduce function, the examples are given with numbers, but in real life, you are usually not dealing with numbers, you are dealing with objects and you are transforming this, those objects in a different way than just using the arithmetic operation. Let's see how we can apply reduce to non-numeric values. And let's start with something simple. So we build our intuition step by step and let's focus on adding numbers extracted from objects. So let's imagine we have this uh, array which consists of objects and each object has a field and in our case it's very simple but you can imagine you can have more fields each object can have more fields and what we need to do we want to extract the number from each object and then we want to add them one to another so that we have total so let's go ahead and do that so we will again use the built-in reduce function and we will add let's provide the initial value and now we need to implement this function and it will be slightly different so again it will take two parameters the the memory and the current value and it will add to the memory not the current value but number right because the current is the object so we need to extract the field and let's assign this to a variable let's see if it works it's 60, so it works. Okay, so we now know that we can do something with the current element. Let's go a step further. So at the beginning, I said that the result of reduce is a single value, and it doesn't mean this is a primitive value. So something like a number or string. The result can be also an array, and we will see that now. And we will implement the flattening of an array. Let's imagine we have an array of arrays, and as a result, I will write it in, uh, in the pseudocode, we want to have something of that sort. We want to merge those internal arrays so that it's one array, so we can access each element directly. And we will use reduce for that. So the first thing is that we will take array, let's assign it directly to the variable. We will reduce and we will use a function called flatten. And as an input, we will give it an empty array. 
this flatten doesn't exist yet. We need to implement it. So again, it will take two parameters, stored and current. So because we are giving it initial value empty array, we know that stored at any given point will be always an array. So we will take this stored and we will concat what we have from current. And let's print it. And there you have it. The result of this is an array, but it's a single value because we were recombining the internal arrays from the input. So reduce function can be also used to find the maximal or minimal values or characteristics of something. So for example, let's try to find the longest array from an array of arrays. So let me go ahead and paste this example. So we have an array here, which contains five other arrays of different size. And our task is to find the longest or the shortest. But let's focus on the longest uh, now. So as before, let's assign it already to a variable. We will reduce the slices over and let's call this function longest. We will provide the initial value as before and let's print it. So now we need to just define this function longest. So again, it takes two parameters, this memory stored and the current element. And now we need to implement it. In this case, stored will be storing arrays because we define the initial value as an array. Our idea is to store the longest array is currently found. This means that we will go over our slices and we will take the first element and store it. And then if we find longest array, we will store it in the, the stored variable. And if not, we will continue. And this way we'll be sure that stored will always contain the longest array so far. And when we reach the end of our slices, of the slices array, it will have the longest array overall. So it's as simple as taking stored, which is an array, taking its length and checking if it's bigger than the current Length. And if that's the case, return the start because that's the longest. Otherwise, return current. So here I'm using this operator, which is just an if. So we could rewrite it slightly different. So we can just take this condition over here. So that's the longest version. And let's see if it works. I run it and indeed that's the longest array. So let's remove some elements and now that's the longest array. There is of course some problem because it will continue so it will find the, the latest. If we have two or more arrays that are the same size at the same time the longest, it will take the last one. And that's something we can, we can improve. In this case as well, the result is an array, the input is an array. But as you can see, the output is somehow a combination. We are combining the input in a way that we are finding the longest array. So as I said at the beginning, reduce is one of the most interesting functions in general in, in programming. And I really like this function. We will use this function a lot. And even though it doesn't seem like that, reduce is very general as a function. What I mean by that? You can use reduce to implement other higher order functions. And we will see that in the next episodes. So we could say that reduce to some extent is the ultimate abstraction. We will see in the next episodes how we can use reduce to implement map, filter and even do more when we'll be talking about transducers. Before we go, let's quickly take a look at this implementation again. So reduce takes three parameters, the function, the initial value, which is optional and collection. And when I say optional, it means that in this built-in uh, reduced version of Java in JavaScript, it's optional. Here in this case, it's not optional. And the function that's being passed to reduce is also known as a reducer because that's the function which goes over the elements and recombines them, so reduces them one by one based on what, what is currently rem remembered and what's the current value. So function is also called a reducer. So you may want to rename it here if you want to be more explicit. That's all for today. See you next time.